All right, so we're back. Um, I just remembered there's one thing that I forgot to do. Uh, if I turn my sketch back on, obviously um, I forgot to create this curved um, wall. So I'm just going to create a control point curve starting here. I just I'm not using too many too many control points. I'm using as few as I can. There we go. The more control points you use, the more jagged and uneven your surface is going to be. Probably even this is too many control points. I could probably get rid of this one without too much bother. Just um, play around with these a little bit more. Maybe move this one in. Like that. That's pretty much the same curve and it'll be much smoother. Okay, good. So again, continue now turn off our sketch. There we have our control point curve. By the way, turning on and off these control points, um, you can either uh, press the F10 or 11 key, I can't remember which one it is, or you can just press cancel. Uh, and if it doesn't work the first time, just press cancel again. Um, so there we go. All right, so let's go back to our perspective view. All right, so that's what I've got at the moment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create some slabs and a roof. So let's start with this slab here. So I want to create this curve, turn this curve into a slab. So actually before we do that, let's talk about the tools that you're going to be using um, if you're going to use Visual Arc. All right, so let's say we are going to use Visual Arc. So here's the Visual Arc menu. All of the tools that are available in Visual Arc are available out of this menu, right? And there's also a whole lot of um, buttons that you can use um, on these different tabs, so on these different toolbars. Now, according to me, the only ones that you really need is this one, which is the general, uh, which has all of the different types of elements that you could create. When you click on them, especially if you right-click on them, it'll give you all of the subheadings as well. Um, the only other one that you could do, and we'll, let's turn that one on. So let's go to the Tools menu uh, and choose Toolbar Layout. Choose over here Visual Arc, um, Visual Arc Documents, and Visual Arc Objects. Those are the ones, the two that we want. Oh, that's right, I forgot. This is the other one that you'll need. Now we won't need that just yet. We'll be using this later on uh, when we um, create sections, etc., um, for our model. So, right now we're trying to create a slab. So here is the slab menu. So the default one is slab from boundary, which is exactly what we want. So I'm now going to create a slab. So select a closed and planar curve for the slab shape. Well, that's just this. Now, what's the thickness of the slab? By default it's 200, so I'm just going to press enter, that's what I want. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is when I select this, if you're using the Visual Arc uh, template, which you should be, um, you'll notice that it automatically gets put onto the slabs layer, which is very useful because you can turn them on and off as at will without having to work out which where it is, etc. Right, so there's our slab, very simple. Um, created with no, not too much fuss. Um, obviously, you know, you could just as easily extrude this curve down, um, and it would uh, it would have created um, a box which we could have just used just as easily. Um, but you know, the visual arc tools are quite useful for other things as well. So we're just going to kind of persevere with it for a while. Uh, now we're going to create a separate slab here with this curve. So again, like that thickness 200. So there's two curves. Now, notice that, two slabs, sorry, uh, notice that they're not actually connected together. And that's okay for me at this point. All right, now I'm going to create some roofs. And remember, we're trying to create just a feeling for what the building will look like, rather than exactly, you know, uh, how it's constructed at this point. Later on, we're going to create some more detailed um, modeling of maybe some of the corners or some of the constructions, but for now we're con we're content to just leave it at this. Right, so now uh, this time I'm going to select my curve again and I'm going to choose instead of slab the roof tool. 
Right, so roof from boundary. There we go. Now, what type of roof am I going to choose? Well, pretty much all of you guys are going to be using the shed um, roof, which basically means without a crease in it. There we go. Now, the slope angle, so currently the slope angle is 30. I'm going to make that zero because I want an essentially flat roof. The thickness of the roof, well, let's keep it at 200 since that's what it's got. Now, specify the roof start axis start point. We don't really need to do that. Well, it's not really too crucial for us. This is if you're using um, a, an angled roof, this would be quite crucial. Um, but for us, we just choose that. And there is our roof. Now you'll notice that one of the problems is it's not at the right height. So we're going to now um, fix that problem by choosing under the properties, um, in the properties tab, we're going to choose the roof of properties of this roof. So you can see it's a standard size, uh, the display, etc, etc. Now here, here's where it gets interesting, the general slope. Thickness. Uh oh. Let me get back to you on that. I'll just pause here while I work out what I'm supposed to be doing and get back to you. Alright, so I've sorted my life out and I'm now ready to show you how to create the roof slab. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw a, a line to indicate where the top of the roof is, or sorry, where the bottom of the roof is. I'm going to start from this corner here, and just draw up. Now, I can't draw up here in the perspective view, remember, because I'll be constrained to the construction plane. So instead, I'm going to go to my right view here, uh, so I'm going nice and straight up here. I'm going to type in my roof height, which is 2700, so 2.7 meters. There we go, and so there's my, my short line there. Right, we're going to use that line there, the end of that line, to start our um, to start our roof. So, select this curve, choose the roof tool, shared roof, enter the slope angle which is zero, press enter, the roof thickness 200, that's fine. Specify the roof axis start point. So, it's going to be up, up here. Pardon me. And then I'm going to come straight out like that. So hold down the shift key. You don't have to go all the way along. Just click there. And there now is my slab. Which sits, start, which starts from 2700 mils up. Now, let's um, make this the center of our world. So that when we, notice how as I turn around, the my model disappears off the, um, off my screen for a bit. We don't really want that to happen, so use the zoom selected tool. Now if we zoom out, that slab is still the center of our universe. Right, so there we go. So there we've got a slab and we've got, we've got two slabs actually, and we've got a one, one roof. Um, I'm now going to create a second roof over the top of that first roof. In order to do that, I realized that I need a second rectangle, which is essentially this rectangle here. Let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So there we go. So I'm going to create another roof which sits over the top of the existing roof. Um, and that juts out, which kind of creates a, a cruciform shape. So again, the procedure is the same. I'm going to create a roof, a shared roof, at the slope of angle of zero. Um, the roof thickness is 200. Specify the roof axis start point. Now this time, instead of drawing the line, I'm going to use a little trick, which is to hold down the control key and click on this corner and then drag straight up. Now I probably want to do this in my in a front or a right view. Let's do that there. So I don't want it to be way high up above the existing roof, but maybe let's say there. that worked. No, it definitely did not work. Alright, so let's go back to our original plan then of just drawing the line straight up. Let's say that this time the roof is going to be 
at 3100. That's not really long enough. So let's make it 3500. Making it up as I go along. Right, so there we go. Um, so then we go through our process again. Choose the, um, choose the rectangle. Shared type roof. The slope angle 0. Roof thickness 200. Specify the roof starting point which is there and then just go straight across this way and there's my second roof sitting over the top of it there alright so I'll just show you what I've created so far so when we come back uh, I'm going to create a wall and some columns to hold up all of this stuff okay that's it I'll see you when I get back All right, and on we go. So we now have some roof slab, some roof slabs, and some floor slabs. Now we want to create this curved wall here. So I'm just going to select the wall. Sorry, at least select the curve. Choose the wall tool. And in fact, I'm going to right-click and choose not the wall tool itself, but the wall from curves tool. So there we go. And there it is. So there's a, again our um, our wall. Um, obviously we need to um, adjust it somewhat so let's see. If we select it we can go and have a look at its wall properties. Um, it's clearly too high at the moment so I'm going to lower it. Um, so let's see geometry, the height. So currently its height is 3000 centimeters or 3000 millimeters. I'm going to bring that down to 2700 and there we go. So now that should meet exactly at the base of that roof, which it does. Alright, good, so there is my one and only solid wall. I'm now going to show you how you can create some holes in it. So, um, under the wall tool, so let's um, drag this down. We've got some, uh, some other tools. So we can extend walls, we can split walls, we can create walls from solids we can add solids, we can subtract solids in the back. So that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to subtract a solid from this object. So, um, to help us, I'm just going to uh, momentarily turn off the roofs so I can really see what I'm doing. And I'm now going to create just a rectangular box through here. Obviously, you know, I'm not really being too worried about measurements and stuff like that, but here's just basically a gap in that wall. So I just created this box here so now I'm just going to choose the, um, the tool that I want, which is Wall Subtract Solids, and I'm just going to follow the instructions. So first I'm going to select the wall, which is this one. Select the solids to subtract, I'm going to select that one. Press Enter when done. Well, enter, and there we go. Here is my hole inside my wall. Right, so let's turn back on our roofs. Let's get rid of this wall tool. I don't really need that at the moment. And there we go. So now what I want to do is create my columns. Now